Welcome to the Sports Network, and we have some serious wrestling action coming up for you today. You're going to absolutely love it. Right off the bat, I want to bring in a man who wants to get that X and out in front of the word champion when it's used to apply to him, and that is Nick Bockwinkle. Nick, please come on in. Teaming up with Ray Stevens again, and that is the main event today on the Sports Network. It's been a long time. Yes, it has. Now, when Ray Stevens and I, for four years, we dominated as the AWA Tag Team Champions of the World. Since that time, there have been a number of champions, and I guess you'd have to say anybody that's champion is a certain degree of greatness. But I will say the thing about Stevens and I, when we were the tag team champions, we actually set a tempo, we set a style, we almost created a mystique about how great we were. And that was simply because we had two styles that blended so well that other than facial differences and maybe a difference in our size and our height, you would not have known one man from the other. And this made us almost impossible to defeat. So today, uh, women, today you're going to see this gentleman and myself do it once again. And as far as I'm concerned, I have no doubt in my mind that the mystique will return. And we'll do the job more than better and well enough. Well, there's no doubt about it. You two were a couple of the greatest champions in tag team history. But that is, after all, history. Are you ready? Is the timing back and can you do it again? Hey, we've already done it all. We know how to do it. And we've got no problems about handling people. We're two of the meanest, toughest wrestlers in the world today. And everybody in professional wrestling knows that. Especially, we've done it all as individuals. We've done it all as a team. You can't take that knowledge away from us. And brother, I'll guarantee you, there's going to be some broken heads and some sore backs when we get through with everybody. You've got to understand. Go ahead. Later on in the program today, the main event, you two against the Hennings. Well, let's put it this way. You've got a father and a son team. And as much as that has a certain attractiveness to us to think that a father and a son are doing their thing together, one of the things that's really bad about that is you have this too tight, the, the bloodline there, too much passion, and it's very easy. You start getting the son over on the side, start doing a number on him, the father can't take it. We'll see that, we'll use it, and we'll push it to our advantage. You're absolutely right. However, you can't take anything away from the Hennings. They're both great wrestlers, and the young one is great, and uh, his father has already proven himself. However, you've got to have that mean streak like Nick and myself. You've got to. You better have it, because if they don't, they're going to come out on the short end of the stick. We're going to find out about it. That is the main event today, and it should be brilliant on the Sports Network. Ray the Crippler Stevens and Nick Bockwinkel back together again, and they are going against Larry and Kurt Henning. That's the main event coming up on the Sports Network. Of moments, you are going to see Nick Bockwinkel and Ray the Crippler Stevens go against Larry and Kurt Henning. It is going to be sensational. Now, just before they go to the ring, we want Larry and Kurt Henning to come on in and talk to us for a second on the Sports Network. Come on in, fellas. Larry, you know plenty about Ray and about Nick, former tag team champions, capable of anything. The question is, can they repeat the past glory? I don't know whether they can repeat it or not, but the difference is going to be here, that we have a father and son relationship. And let me give you a little background on that. A father that, and a son that fish together, hunt together, and wrestle together, and stay together, it has to be a tighter team than just a team that's been thrown together. Now, I know they were world champions previous, prior to this. But the fact is here that the axe and the double axe are together, and we're going to give it all. You know, when there's blood relationship, that means closeness. And closeness means teamship, and that's exactly what we have. Two of the all-time best, Kurt. <clears throat> you know, this is something uh, very good for me, too. These two are two of the greatest wrestlers that have ever been together in the history of professional wrestling. And this is an opportunity for me, as a young wrestler, to get in there and get against these guys who have held world titles before, have wrestled as a team all over the world. And it's an opportunity for my dad and I to prove ourselves to the wrestling world and the people all through Canada. That we are a team now, we've got it together, we've wrestled the top wrestlers all over the world, and what we're looking forward to is a chance at the World Heavyweight titles and perhaps a win over these two men. The greatness that they've put together over the years would be a big stepping stone if we could get a win over these two men. Have you guys got your timing down? Well, I Good think, physical condition, the whole nine yards? I think we've got it all together, and I'm going to tell you another thing. You know, what a, what a great thrill it's going to be to beat these two men. Like Kurt has said, we've got to go on to bigger and greater things, but we have to take care of the stuff underneath first. And we've done our homework. 
And I certainly hope that Bachwinkle and Ray Stevens has done theirs because we're going out to win. First of all, we, that we cannot be intimidated by these guys, number one. And number two, with our great skill and timing and background, strength, speed, endurance, we've got our complete package together. And Kurt, we're going all the way for it. Makes no difference to us, but you can rest assured of one thing. The axe and the double axe are going to give it it all. Go get them. On their way to the arena right now, Kurt and Larry Henning, and they are going to take on Nick Bockwinkle and Ray Stevens. It should be wild. Stay right here. We've got that action next on the Sports Network. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a tag team battle. One for Introducing first, out of Robbinsdale, Minnesota, he weighed in at 241 pounds, Kurt Hennig, Hennig, and his partner, his father, at 314 pounds, he is Larry the Axe Hennig. And their opponents back together for the first time in three years. The former tag team champions. First of all, from Beverly Hills, California, at 246 pounds, the former heavyweight champion of the world, Nick Bockwinkel, and his partner out of San Francisco, 238 pounds, Ray the Crippler Stevens. Well, this is going to be impressive. Nick Bockwinkel and Ray Stevens, first time they've been together in over three years. These men held the Tag Team Championship of the world for a long time. They know one another very, very well. Ray Stevens has been out with a knee injury. He is back, and he looks like he's in good shape to me. Time will tell how the knee holds up. Nick Bockwinkel, excellent condition. We know that. They've got a test of all tests. Father and son, there's the big man, 314 pounds, Larry Henning, and son, Kurt Henning, at 241. Bachwinkle at 241. And from Ray the Crippler Stevens, 238 pounds. Steven will start against Kurt Henning. Collar and elbow. Early on, we'll keep an eye on Stevens to see if he's back 100%. Kurt Henning with a headlock on Ray Stevens. I'll tell you, Larry, when I looked at the lineup tonight and I saw Mr. Saito's name crossed out and Ray Stevens' name penciled in, I couldn't believe it. I don't know where the crippler has been these few years, but you talk about a bombshell. How Bachman can pull this one off, I do not know. I talked to Ray earlier, and he said he'd been out a bit with a knee injury, but he feels like he's back. Now Bachman will try to get in. Larry Henning making sure he doesn't. At any time, this match could explode. The Hennings, not famous for controlling their tempers. Nick Bockwinkle will do anything that he even dreams he can get away with. And Ray Stevens get the, the, did not get the nickname the Crippler because he's a nice guy. I'll tell you, Larry, I can't even begin to count the men that Ray Stevens has put out of wrestling. He came by that nickname very, very honestly. And as I mentioned in the introduction, Nick Bockwinkle and Ray Stevens for a long period of time were the tag team champions of the world. They are no strangers to each other, that's for certain. Stevens got the tag to Bockwinkle. The referee didn't see it. Larry Henning made his tag, and it looks like the referee's going to call him off of that one, too. Larry just simply holds on to Stevens' head until Kurt gets back in there, and Kurt cranks up the headlock again. 
Ray Stevens and Nick Bockwinkel know one another so very well. Now, wait a minute. Larry Henning shaking the ropes, and Bockwinkel <laughs> falling over. I mean, he is mad, but not that bad. When Larry Henning comes in to meet the challenge, Bockwinkel backs off. Nick Bockwinkel, arguably the shrewdest man in wrestling. Stevens backs Kurt Henning to their corner. Now we're going to do a little double team. Ray Stevens distracting the referee. These guys will show you some tag team timing, the likes of which you've never seen. If they're back to their 100% days of the past, Bockwinkel and Stevens. I'm done looking at Ray Stevens outside the ring, Larry. He looks to be in pretty good shape. Ray Stevens, famous for being in condition, famous for being crafty, as crafty as Bockwinkel. These two guys don't have that much size. 241 on Bockwinkel, 238 on Stevens. And I tell you, they're unbelievable. Now, what is going on here with Larry Henning? He's up on the second rope. I don't know. You never know what he's liable to do. That father and son combination, they're, they're very, very close-knit family, the Hennigs are, and Kurt and Larry very close. And anytime Kurt's in trouble, Larry is liable to come in and try and bail him out. But now he's in a very bad position right now in the corner of Bockwinkel and Stevens. Kurt is definitely in trouble. Bockwinkel gave him to Stevens and then called off a referee. Stevens choking the living daylights out of Kurt Henning and Bockwinkel making sure the referee doesn't interfere with it. Now Bockwinkel back on the attack. Of all the places for a wrestler to be in the corner with Ray Stevens and Nick Bockwinkel is one of the worst in anywhere in professional wrestling. Well, the only worst spot, I think, would be the corner of Animal and Ox and Road Warriors. It's a toss-up. Kurt Henning made the tag. But I, don't, Nick I don't think the referee saw it. No, he sure didn't. Stevens calling Bockwinkel in, and now they're both going to work on Kurt Henning. Larry, you got to get out of there so the referee can go break it up. Now, really, Larry, Bockwinkel and Stevens were in the corner, but they did not tag, but the referee didn't see. There's nothing he can do. Nick Bockwinkel now with a head scissor on Kurt Hitting. Kurt Hitting taking a lot of punishment early on in this bout. One fall, 45 minute time limit. And so far, kid, we talked about Ray Stevens had been injured with that knee for a while. He looks good. He looks solid, and he's back in there now. Kurt Henning getting a momentary advantage. A it tag. Must, Larry, you can see it right now. It must have been very successful. All he's wearing is knee pads, but there's no kind of bandage or taping underneath. So whatever knee problem he had has certainly disappeared. And, you know, watching Ray Stevens, he's the same crippler. Every time Bachwinkle had Kurt Henning in serious trouble, you could see the gleam, the enjoyment in the face of Ray Stevens. Kurt Henning got out of it. Ray Stevens made the tag. Kurt didn't see it. Did Kurt make the tag? I don't think so. Bockwinkle grabbed him by the trunk there prevented him from making the tag. And can't get there. Now they're going to trade punches. I got Kurt didn't go to the corner, chose instead to trade punches, and now he'll pay the price. Stevens has got him. Larry Hennig now right above us, urging Kurt on. He wants to get in that ring so bad, Larry, he can almost taste it. It's going crazy in the far corner. Ooh. Turnbuckle for Kurt Henning. He desperately needs the tag. Kurt Henning's a strong man. How much is it going to take? How can he get it? Come on, Kurt. Come on. There it is. <laughs> Look at five points up on his back. He backed up in a big hurry. What in the world happened? What happened was 314 pounds of Larry the Axe hitting. Uh, now he's got Stevens. Now he's got Bockwinkle. I think, I think Bockwinkle is the legal man in the ring. I think Larry Hennig could care less. He'd like either one of them in there, Larry. He's got both of them in serious trouble. Now they're going to talk about it and try to try to get some semblance of order back to their game plan. 
Right about now, Ray Stevens is probably Three. wondering, why did I come back? Three. I should have stayed out. Look at Larry Henning. He's backing off. He wants somebody to get in there. Uh, Nick Bachwick will make his way very slowly and cautiously into that ring. As Larry the Axe Henning was a one-man gang. Well, Larry the Axe is going to take Bachwick over. He's done it first. Here comes Larry. 314 pounds, brings an elbow down on you, but he only got a two count. Boy, how he kicked out of that one is beyond me. Nick Bockwinkle, don't underestimate him. We've seen this man take a tremendous beating and believe he can give one out, too. Now they're both down. Watch out for Stevens. Watch out for Ray Stevens. See Ray up in that second row. Bachwick is now crawling over to Larry Hennig. Now the referee sees Stevens and orders him back down to the ring apron. Bachwick as Larry Hennig wrote over that rope, distracts the referee, and Ray Stevens applies the choke. These gentlemen know what they're doing. They always know what they're doing. Perfect premeditation. Now Bachwick standing on the back of Larry Hennig's head. Now he'll back off and Stevens will take over. Bach will go to track the referee for a while. I don't know how long they can keep this up. As long as they want to, I guess. Bach will go with a boot now. I tell you, referee Jim Mitchell has a very tough job trying to control Nick Bachwinkle and Ray Stevens. Every referee that has ever been in a ring with him has had a hard time controlling him. Stevens, the legal man, and now what? He's gonna, he's gonna pick an argument. Kurt Hennings gonna come in and try to break things up. Meanwhile, Bachwinkle's having a field day, choking the life out of Larry Hennings, and now they're beating on it. I don't know, take a look. There the actual Hennings' eyes, Larry Nelson, look awful great at this point. Now, Bachwinkle's trying to wrap him up in that bottom row. You're going on two. They got him about half wrapped up. Bachwinkle backs off, but he's done what he wanted to do. Stevens right back on with that choke ball. They're going to tag, and Bachwinkle will come in and play some more. Larry Henning, a big man, 314 pounds, but there is a limit to what anybody can take. Now, look at this. Boot after boot. Oh, to the back of the neck. I don't know if Bachwinkle's going for his sleeper hold, or if that's a chin lock. I think it's the Bachwinkle sleeper. I can't really tell, Larry, from this angle, but... It, I tell you, I, I think one of the problems Bachwinkle is having, Larry the ex Hennig's neck, Larry, is so big that Bachwinkle really can't get that sleeper on as well as he might like. But they got him drunk enough. They've been beating on him for the better part of five minutes. But again, you're right. It takes something just to get the sleeper hold up. Look at Larry the Hennig. Look at Kurt Hennig encouraging his father, Larry the Axe. Larry is somehow working his way to his feet. What a beating he's taken in the last few minutes. Bachwinkle trying hard to hang on to that sleeper hold. Larry Henning. Looks like he's going to try to pick him up. He's got him. Taking him to friendly territory. Kurt says, hello, Dad. Thanks for the present. Bachwinkle in a world of trouble. And now it's Kurt hitting sir. Make your bell break. Kurt goes for the cover. Kurt went for the cover, but Ray Stevens was too close, and an eye gouge breaks it up. Right to the bread basket. Nick Bachwinkle, and then turns around and gets one to the jaw again. The cover. Bachwinkle kicking out. I don't know where he got at the energy, but he's out of it. And now it's going to be Larry Henning back in. Kurt will take Bachwinkle to the ropes. The oh. Oh. 314 pounds with the elbow. Stevens breaks it up. Get out of here, Ray Stevens. One, two. Jimmy Mitchell trying to run Stevens out. They tag off again. And how is Bachwinkle on his feet? Now look at this. Oh. Blind Bachwinkle's out of the ring. There's an axe for Stevens. 
Kurt Henning to reach over trying to get it. Ray Stevens unable to do so. Ordered back by referee Jim Mitchell. Ray Stevens coming into the ring. He is not the legal man in the ring. What's going on now? I think Kurt thought it was Nick Bockwinkel. Ray Stevens with a small package. Three, three. Kurt Henning has got to be wondering where the energy came from. Kurt Henning was pinned in three. That's the information we got, but wait a minute. It was the wrong man, Larry Nelson. It was Nick Bockwick who was the legal man in the ring. You saw Ray Stevens. He crawled underneath. He had the same color hair. He covered up his facial features, and I don't think referee Jim Mitchell to this corner. Larry Henning puts Jimmy Mitchell on his back. Indicates to Henning to be the winner. Wrong man. Larry Henning was right over You gotta wonder Maybe what's going on. It was the wrong man. Kurt Henning Time will tell. There are your winners. 